Joining me today on the Uniweb interview show, Christine Raymond, contemporary romance and historical Western romance novel, novelist, I should say. Um, Christine, thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you? Hey, hi, everybody. I'm good. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Uh, we were talking a little bit before um, I started recording. You have written a ton of books. <laughs> Maybe not a ton, but yeah, fifteen. <laughs> well, I guess a so ton. Yeah, a ton denotes two thousand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you had yeah, fifteen. That's incredible. When so I want I want to kind of get into this, and um, for people who watch the show, know we kind of go over a lot of different things. Um, first off, you you write contemporary romance, historical uh, Western romance, that kind of thing, but you also write. Um, the celebration series is that uh, more of an uplifting kind of like inspirational story? No, that's a that, that's contemporary romance. That's contemporary uh, it's romance. about a, it's about a town called Celebration. Okay, so when did you start? First off, when did you start writing? Uh, Labor Day weekend, two thousand thirteen. Really, like that's seriously when the day you started writing. Yes, and all these books came out since then. Yeah. Yes, I sat down that Saturday and uh, started writing Here to Stay, which is the first in the Hidden Springs series, and uh, kind of just did it just to see if I could, and got bitten by the writing bug and haven't stopped yet. <laughs> Seriously, like, this is what blows my mind, though. So, <laughs> like, you got bit by, like, a radioactive writing spider, um, and you yeah. just... Did something happen? I mean, what had you done previous to uh, May 3rd or uh, of 2013? No, September. September, September. sorry. Labor Day. Yeah. Labor. Um, you know, I just worked jobs, <laughs> just worked a lot of uh, office type jobs and, and uh, yeah. never really wanted to write. It wasn't a dream of mine to become an author. I always love to read. I still do love to read. Mm -hmm. And, and um, a friend of mine, a girl that I worked with, she had self-published her own book, and she and I were kind of talking about it, and she was telling me a little bit about it, and I thought, you know, that sounds kind of cool. I, maybe I'll do that. And I did. And, you know, five and a half years later, and, um, you know, I'm working on book number 16, and got 17, 18, 19, and 20 in my head, and yeah, I just don't, uh, don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Does it blow your mind to think, like how did I get here? Or are you just like, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> totally. Um, no, sometimes it blows my mind. Sometimes I, I kind of think back to when I only had one or two books out and now I'm like, okay, there's 15 that, you know, that's a lot. Yeah. But, um, then in, in other ways, it's just, you know, it's a day to day thing. It's a, it's a job just like any other job. It's just, I'm working for myself. So, yeah. There's a lot besides the writing that goes into it, and right. you know, some days are kind of boring, some days aren't, and <laughs> lots of ups and downs. And I don't so know. So you are a full time writer now. You write. Full -time. I am. I do. When did that start? Um, actually, about three years ago. Um, more because of a, a medical issue, so I wasn't okay. able to work outside the home anymore. Okay. Um, so. You know, it's 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 not uh, from a financial aspect by any means. Right, right, right. But it was something you were able to put full time hours into. Yes. At that point. Uh, and more than full time hours. And I mean, a lot of self published authors out there work full time jobs and then still oh, yeah. put 40, 50, 60 hours into into their writing. So it's uh, it's a lot. Absolutely. So. What was the very what was your very first book? We'll talk about that, and then we'll talk about the very last book that you've published right now. We'll, we'll kind of work our way through there. So, what was your very first book that you published? The first book was Here to Stay, and it's in the historical Western romance genre. It's uh, about a town called Hidden Springs in Arizona Territory in the late 1800s, and I wrote that story. Not necessarily thinking that it was going to be a series until I was kind of into the story a little bit. And then I mm -hmm. thought, okay, I like this character. They're going to need one of their their own story. And this character is going to need their own story. 
And I ended up planning out eight books for the series. Oh, wow. And the eighth book, Coming Home, is about the daughter of the main couple in Here to Stay. So it the, the okay. entire s- series spans 33 years. It's kind of like a wow. saga. Um, but I thought I was done with the series with that eighth book until last year, working on something completely different, completely different genre. And one of the characters from kind of one of the side characters from the fifth book started talking to me and was like, I need my own story. (laughs) And uh, so now there are nine (laughs) books in the Hidden Spring series because I ended up writing Enduring Traditions, which is the final Springs book, maybe. (laughs) And what what was this inspired by? I mean, I know the whole, I mean, I know it was inspired by seeing these books and stuff like that. But what was what was this story in particular inspired by? You know, I've always been a fan of the Old West. I grew up watching Westerns. I just always loved that era. If I could time travel, I'd be back there in a second. And I just really wanted to write a story about, you know, life in the Old West and what it was like. It was like. so dangerous. And, oh, it was. And and actually, my stories have a lot of, um, you know, they're, they're not just kind of... a. A fluffy romance type thing there's suspense uh-huh. there's action there's uh, you know a lot of kind of gritty stuff that happens in all of the books yeah. and um you know people die and it's sometimes it's favorite characters that die and and oh my you know it, it was it was a tough time back then but it just made sense that that's what i wanted to write about as to where the stories come from i don't know I don't really have an answer for that. They just kind of pop into my head, and I'm like, "Yeah, okay, I'll go with that." <laughs> that so okay. When it just pops into your head, does it pop into your head as like a word or a phrase or like a uh, idea of a character? Or what is it that pops into your head normally? Do you have all of the above? Yeah. I mean, it could be any combination. Um, the character Landry, I actually dreamt her name. I woke up one morning and said, "Oh, that character is going to be named Landry." Don't know where that name came from, except for in the dream. But I can hear, you know, a line from a song or overhear a conversation or see something or just just sit and kind of let my mind percolate. And yeah. it's like, oh, be cool. You know, let's do that or let's try this or what if this would happen? And I just kind of go with it. That's so interesting. I um. I know the feeling, but it, it's also, it sounds like you also are um, somebody who plots out their stories or has an outline involved. Is that right? Nope, I don't outline. Oh, no, outline? I don't you outline. You said you had like a whole bunch no. of books already planned, right? Right. Well, as far as like the ideas, I know which books okay. I want to write, but I don't, I usually going into a book know, I know how it's going to begin. Mm-hmm. I have an idea of how it's going to end, but it doesn't necessarily end that way because yeah. when you're writing, the story really does take on a life of its own. Mm-hmm. Um, the middle, I usually don't have any idea. I mean, I kind of know a couple of things that I want to have happen, but I don't really. I mean, a, a lot of my books, the stories surprise me as much as they surprise the readers. Yeah. Kind of just go from that, that root and see how it sprouts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I, a lot of authors, you know, I talk about this with them. These stories really do take on a life of their own when you're writing. I mean, you can try to say, okay, I want this to happen and sort of force your plot that way. And if that's not how your characters want it to happen, it won't happen that way. I mean, so many times it veers off into something else. And I think the stories are better for it if you just let them happen naturally yeah no i t- I totally agree with that because it it becomes the story that you are discovering as opposed to the story that you're trying to tell and discovering yes. a new story is so exciting yes yeah so the latest book that you have published what wh- what is that and when did it come out well that would have been enduring traditions i enduring actually have tradition. a copy here which is the um the final Hidden Springs book okay. and that came out in November of last year. And again, I was working on a cozy mystery 
you know, completely different genre. And this one just kind of popped into my head, these characters and said, actually it was Micah. I'll, I'll blame it on him. Micah Tanner. He said, I want my own story. Yeah. And so I sat down and took a couple months and wrote it. And yeah. And when you know a character so well, it's like when you when you have a character so well defined, do you build your characters out or do you allow the story as you write it to kind of dictate who they become? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, uh -huh. I think the characters, they, they kind of guide me in the direction they want to go and the things that they want to have happen. But at the same time, as the author, I can also say, all right, I'm I'm putting you in this situation. Now you tell me what you're going to do. That kind of thing. Yeah. I'm always really interested to find out, too, so with somebody who's written 15 books, you're working on 16, and you have, you said uh, almost the 20 planned, right? Like, or ideas of 20. Um, Actually, I have more than, ideas for more than that. <laughs> but yeah, that's just kind of... What? One, of, one of the upcoming things I have planned is a, is a seven book series so yeah <laughs> it, it boggles my mind to think about the series because to span an idea like to be able to create a, a story that you can continue to tell without there being an end point i mean do you do you struggle sometimes at the end of one book like knowing that okay this is the end of this story that's going to lead into the next series of this story kind of deal so i feel like if it's not a definite end for me I feel like I would be all over the place. Like I would want to keep writing the same book. If that makes sense. Well, with with the books that I've written so far, with the Hidden Spring series and the Celebration series, each book could be read as a standalone. It it tells the story in in and of itself and has its happily ever after. And there's a resolution at the end of it. What makes it a series is that I'm incorporating the same town, the same characters in each book. Um, it's just that each story, they have different main characters, but the, like, for instance, in, um, Here to Stay, Sam and Kate are the main characters and their friends are Jack and Landry. Well, in Hearts on Fire, the second book, Jack and Landry are the main characters. Uh, and yeah. in Abby's Heart, uh, Landry's niece, Abby is the main character and so on. So I've, I've created this town and populated with all these characters and then the different characters get their own stories wow okay very cool um so what all have in the past what's it been six years what all have you learned uh as a writer going from not wanting to write or having the dream of writing to now having published 15 books self self-published like in terms of marketing, business-wise, uh, writing-wise, what are, what's some of the stuff that's really stuck out to you? Going into it, I knew absolutely nothing. I didn't know what the different uh, formats for an ebook were. So, like a Mobi and an EPUB, I didn't even know what those were. Sure. Um, I didn't know what a formatter was or what he did. I mean, I knew absolutely nothing except how to type. Baby. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> right. Since since then, you know, I've learned kind of those basics and how to take a, a book from the idea to the finished product. Um, but I've also learned how to write better, how to craft a sentence in a in a better way. Um I think I'm a better storyteller now than I was back then. Mm -hmm. I I don't think I'll ever stop learning, and and I that's a good thing. I mean, I don't think yeah. it's possible to know everything in the writing business, either from a writing standpoint or a marketing and promotion standpoint. Right. You just want to keep your your mind open and and be open to ideas and learn new things and try new techniques and honestly just not be afraid to to take take chances <laughs> yeah take risks what's in terms of romance i tried writing a romance before so i know um and it was just a short story and it scared the crap out of me i know because i hate i'm <laughs> not i don't feel comfortable with it whatsoever but that's why i was like trying to push myself so i tried to write a short story with it and i thought it turned out okay but 
I having no clue whatsoever. I'm just like two people meet, blah blah blah. Are there certain rules in in romance writing that you follow for yourself to build like a suspenseful, like dramatic, um, alluring romance towards one character and another? Like, are there things that you're putting in place throughout the story? For me, I always like to be sure that there is a conflict of some, okay. of some, uh, some aspect that needs to be resolved. Because, mm-hmm. I don't know, for me it's kind of boring if you just have two people that meet and, they, and, and that's it. It's like, okay, you know, yeah. you're my life partner. Here we go. That's, you know, that wraps up in three pages. So you <laughs> Hooray. Kind of, Let's get married. <laughs> yeah. 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 You kind of want to have something where they're fighting against the odds to be together. Something that, that bonds them, that, that brings sure. them together. So... In that sense, yeah, I try to do that with all of my books. They have to overcome some sort of conflict or, you know, it could be another person who's trying to get between them or whatever it is to get them to either happily ever after or happily for now, which right. all of mine, not really giving anything away here, all of mine have happily ever afters. I, I haven't broken anybody up yet, so... Um, yet being the key word. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> One of them might come speaking to you. They might want to go have go that's to the uh, the town social with one of the other guy's wives or something like that. <laughs> that's future. right. You never know. It's the wild now, web, write... right? Yeah, anything goes. Yeah, anything goes. Um, I did. <laughs> I did write an erotic drama though, which is more women's fiction. It's not a romance, and it's about a woman who's been married for 30 years and her husband's very inattentive and she meets this stranger who starts paying her a lot of attention and she kind of has to decide is she going to have a fling with him is she going to get serious with him um kind of that sort of thing and the book is uh, about the consequences that she faces based on the choices she makes that's called tempted Tempted. And that one came out a couple a year ago or so? Or recently? That was actually last year too. Uh, Tempted, okay. Seasons of Love, and Enduring Traditions all came out in 2018. Have you no know, when you put these books out, do you have like do you have a uh, beta readers? I mean uh, obviously going through an editing process, a uh, beta reading process, do you have like uh, people who get the books beforehand and have like arc readers basically and then will buy copies when the book comes out or like, how do you go about promoting and doing all that kind of stuff for the works? Well, I have a great group of beta readers, a great group of ladies who read for me and point out my mistakes and what works and doesn't work and things like that. I absolutely love them to death. And I know I can trust their opinions and they make my books better. Um, as far as giving out advanced reader copies, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It it just kind of depends. I'm not very good about planning out like a big release date. Uh, yeah. For me, once I have book ready to go, I'm usually like, okay, guess what? It's live. <laughs> and yeah. that's about the extent of my promotion. Right. You're at, I mean, because you're at about what, uh, two books every year, if not a little bit more than that. Right. Three it, books it a year. It averages three a year. Yeah. Because I just and passed it, the um, five-year mark in November. And it's all on Amazon, correct? Yeah, they're on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Kobo, iTunes, pretty much anywhere you can find a book. They're, they're available ebooks. You can order the paperbacks. Have What, what kind of success have you seen uh, putting out book after book after book? Um, in the past five years like have you seen your uh sales increase like your ranking because it, there's been so many talk amongst in, indie published authors who are writing one two you know book one book two whatever um how important it is to the uh, the algorithm to get your to get your name up there have have you seen a difference like when you put out the first book in the series and then you know four months later you put out the next book and then Four months later, you put out the next book. Like, do you see those that the success rate climb? Um, 
I do sometimes see read through where I can tell that a person uh, has picked up the first book and then liked it enough that they go through the the entire series because right. usually they're the next book in the series like every two days I'll have a sale of that. I got you. Um, and here to stay, the first book in Hidden Springs is available free on all platforms, so awesome. people can can take a chance on the series without spending any money and then hopefully they like it enough that I do get that read through. Was that something you did uh, prior to the rest of the series being out or was that something you did post? Like, did you make it free after the the rest of the books? Cause that's something I've been thinking about doing too, is like make the first book in the series free and then just bank on the rest. (laughs) Like cross your fingers. (laughs) Well, it's, I mean, there's a term for it in the marketing business. It's called a loss leader. Um, Mm. And and again, it's to bring in uh, readers and get them hooked on your series so that they'll read all the way through. I I believe I put it free once I put out the fourth book, which was A Chance on Love. I think that's when I uh, made it perma-free. And I have um, actually tried this last year where I put, I mean, I actually put it for sale, like I put a price on it, and mm. I saw my read through just plummet. So for me, wow. it works to have it as a loss leader, even though I know a lot of readers see a free book and they, uh, you know, they click on it and it might sit on their Kindle for years before they get to it. Right. That's okay because my books will still be there in a couple of years and they can read it then. Yeah. But on the other hand, I have those people who take a chance not knowing me and say, okay, I'm going to read this book. Hey, I really like that. What happens next? And they yeah. have eight more books to, to uh, choose from. It sounds like, and, and I feel like um, I'm coming to more and more of this realization. It's a tough one to come to for me because I'm a very impatient person that I have to remember that I'm playing a long game. And it sounds like you're, you're, you know that this is for the long haul. It's like just, be patient, just keep putting in, keep plugging along, and it's going to pay off, right? You asked me earlier what I've learned since I started this, and I think that is the number one thing is patience. Because yeah. I am a very impatient person <laughs> with anything. I want to just yeah. be able to sit down and do it and see results. Yep. And that's really not how this works. I mean, for some authors it does, and that's great, but that's a very small percentage where – you know, your first book out of the gate is, you know, a bestseller kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I've had to learn to just say, okay, th- they're out there. It may not happen today. I may not be hitting bestseller list today, but that doesn't mean it won't happen tomorrow or next year or next year. All I can do is keep putting more books out. And it's because I want to put more books out too. It's not right. because I'm writing to the market or anything like that. I'm writing and releasing the books that the stories that I want to share with people. I think that's such an important distinction too, because I've seen uh, going through like learning as much as I've, I've been trying to learn as much as possible in this process and seeing that there's so many people out there talking about publish 20 books, make 50 K a year as a writer kind of deal. But it's like, if you're just public, if you're just writing to get a book out, what kind of quality are you putting out there? You're saturating your market with, you know, watered down stuff because it's it, it's something you know you're just putting out whatever. If if you're writing it because you're ap- absolutely passionate about it, then it's really going to find traction. Right, and you know, the big thing in indie publishing is finding your your thing, what works for you. Right. For me, churning out book after book doesn't work for me. I I mean, I don't think even if I wanted to, I don't think it's possible for me to do it because a story has really does come to me in its own time. I've written some stories very quickly. Oh, as an example, Here to Stay, I wrote in 18 days. Tempted took me four years. I mean, it really, (laughs) it really depends. Um, So for me to be able to just sit down and say, okay, here's a story put it out there a month later. Here's another one. Here's another one. I can't do that more power to the, to the authors that can. And I know some that 
that release every couple of months that do have the quality in their stories. Sure. They're just yeah. really fast, prolific writers. Sure. But I think what's really important is finding what works for you, being comfortable with what works for you. I'm not saying not to try things outside of the box or I don't, right. I don't mean it that way, but I mean, owning what works for you and not constantly feeling like you're less than because you're not doing it like that author over there or, or that author over there. Yeah. Don't play the compare game. It's absolutely worthless right. to play. Don't compare your, ourselves to anybody else. Absolutely not. Right. Exactly. We're doing ourselves a exactly. disservice hundred percent of the time when we do that. Um, but you brought up another good point. I want to, I want to touch on real quick is you were talking about the one took 18 days and one took four years. Are you working on multiple projects? Like, if, so if if this book that you're writing is not coming along, do you have another idea that you might be also working on? Or is it just like, I'm going to work on this book until it's done? Well, kind of both. Um, I can only work on one book at a time as far as I can't have... Uh, like I said, I have ideas for like three books for this year. Right. I can't be working on all three of those manuscripts simultaneously. However, if I reach a point where the story I'm working on isn't going anywhere, I am able to put that aside and start something new. So that's what right. happened with Tempt. When I started writing that, the first five chapters came to me like that. And they were really strong and I was really happy with it. And then I was like, okay, I have no idea what's happening next. <laughs> and I worked on and off for it, on it, and I took breaks, and it just wasn't coming to me. And I finally had other story ideas that were kind of pushing their way to the forefront, saying, okay, you're not getting anywhere with this one. I want you to work on me. Right. And that's what happened. Um, so, because like the Hidden Spring series, I wrote other types of books in between writing the historical romance because I kind of got burnt out on a little bit. So sure. I took a break and wrote the books in the celebration series and, you know, things like that. Last year, the ideas for Tempted came back to me. I mean, I had looked at it on and off over those four years, but all of a sudden it kind of congealed like, oh, this is what's going to happen. And I sat down and finished the book. That's awesome. It's it, it's it's nice to see too that uh, somebody who's who's written so many books uh, can still get to that place where they feel like and I they just get stuck on an idea, but you just keep plugging along like we were talking about. You just keep on doing what you're good at. You just keep writing something. Do you have like a certain time? I know you say you, you write full time, but like, are you in the chair from like eight in the morning until a certain time at night, just hitting the keys, or do you have a, a a rhythm you go with? No, it just kind of depends what that day brings. Um, you know, some days are writing days. Some days aren't. Some days I'm more productive in the mornings. Some at night. I, I'm just, yeah, I don't adhere to a really. You just wait for schedule. that lightning bolt to hit you, and then you go. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. No, I know. <laughs> because, yeah. you know, I I have heard from other authors there's a, a school of thought out there that you know you put your butt in the chair and you sit and you write even if even if what you write isn't any good you just sit and write that does not work for me i've tried that i can sit and stare at the screen for three hours and write nothing because what what i put out for me and i'm not saying it doesn't get edited down the line but what i put out for me has to be exactly what i want to say right then yes and yeah. i can i can and have spent an hour writing one sentence because until i get that sentence to say exactly what i want it to i can't move on to the next one it's how i work i've accepted it i've tried to change it and still come back to that it's my process and i'm happy with it i know well, exactly i'm not always happy with it but <laughs> Well, I know exactly what you mean, because I feel like I can't, if I'm trying to have like a, if I'm feeling stuck, I feel like I need to do some brainstorming and just try to write. I can't sit at the computer and write. I have to get a notebook, something completely disassociated with the story I'm writing, because I don't want, like, I have to, I have to be a, away from it or apart from it and just like scribble in a notebook or something like that. Because when I sit and write, because I go from beginning to end, 
Like I'm not, I don't jump around and it's gotta be, like you said, yeah. it's gotta be the next, it's gotta be what I want to say next. It can't be because otherwise I'm going to be going back, like deleting, removing, and it's just going to be a whole, whole big thing. It's just, well, I totally understand that process. Um, well, exactly. I've tried like skipping ahead, like, okay, this chapter is going nowhere. Let me go to the next one. And yeah. I guess maybe because I don't outline because I do let what I'm writing then flow into what happens next if if i don't know what's happening now i don't know what happens next so to skip ahead right. doesn't really <laughs> make doesn't sense. really work for me. <laughs> you know yeah. and the the more i try to force it the kind of the thicker that wall gets yep yeah so you also uh you, you talk about writing a good bit you have a podcast i do and what's the name of the podcast i do it's it's called Wordplay with Christine Raymond. It debuted uh, October 31st of last year. Mm -hmm. I just published my 54th episode, I believe it was, on Wednesday. Wow. Uh, two, new, two new episodes drop every Wednesday. And I chat with authors um, about their books, their writing processes, their hobbies, pretty much whatever. There's no... Uh, there's no strict guidelines. It's just kind of a conversation about, uh, uh, honestly, about whatever. I'm that sounds like a terrible Star show. Wars, Nobody should ever do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It's no, you know, it's so much fun. And I think it gives readers an opportunity to learn about the authors they love yep. in a different way, kind of see a different side of that person. Because so many times when, as authors, when we give an interview, it's, you know, here are the 10 questions to answer kind of thing. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but it's also nice to kind of break away from that a little bit and say, you know, hey, anything goes. Tell me what's on your mind kind of thing. So that's yeah. what wordplay does. Yeah, and it's like, um, it's like writing the story without an outline, you know, because we get to see who the, who the, who the author is, like what's, what's really underneath there when there's no there's no guidelines available for you because that's kind of how I've, I've uh, formatted my show. Cause I, it's an authentic, just like, I want to get to know you cause I don't know who you are, you know? And I think right. that when people get to know who's writing the stories that they love, there's more of a connection there for one, but then the people who don't know about the story whatsoever, there might be that I want to check out this person's work. They seem very interesting. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the weird Hello? echo all of a sudden. Can you oh. hear me? Yeah, I can. Okay. Let's skip. skip um, that's what I like about the show is that it's not just authors giving me the blurb of their their book. They're talking about how they came up with the idea or what it is about that genre that excites them, and you know, that kind of thing. And, and I hope it appeals to the readers. I hope it appeals to everybody out there. Um, I, I've heard a lot of good feedback from the authors who participate that they love it. So, and I love doing it. I have a lot of fun with it. It is a, it's a wonderfully fun thing. And where can, where can uh, we find the podcast? The best way to do it is to go to my website, which is www.christineraymond.com backslash listen, or is that slash? I always get them mixed up. Anyway, go to the wordplay tab <laughs> and click on click on listen, okay. and you'll see the different pictures of the authors who have been on there. And uh, you can just click on the link, and it'll take you to it. But the podcast is available on Podbean, iTunes, iHeartRadio, uh, Google, pretty much anywhere that you find a podcast, except Pandora. I'm trying to get in on Pandora, but no luck there yet. Okay, um, and I've been asked this question before. What is what's who was your favorite interview for one and <laughs> what's the, what's the the uh, coolest thing you've learned from interviewing these other authors well or the most impactful to preface thing. Coolest thing. to preface i love all of my guests so we'll put that out there but ah. and i think they'll all be okay with this my absolute favorite was i got to talk to sandra brown the um, romance yeah. author who yeah. I have been reading her books since the 80s absolutely love 
every out and she was on the show in February and it was just a highlight um, for me to be able to talk to her and kind of fangirl a little bit. So that, um, that, that, that had to was have been an amazing thing. experience. It, it was, it was. And I tried to stay all calm and cool and collected. And uh, the second yeah. I introduced her, I was like, ah, <laughs> so it's almost that, better just that was, to freak out, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Just, just own it. it. Just way. say, yeah. yep. That's it. Get out That's of the way. it. How did you? And, how did you end up contacting her? How that? How that happen? You know, I just emailed her. Uh, her agent, or her pub. Was it her agent or her publishing? The publishing house, and they contacted me and said, "Yeah, she'd love to be on the show." And that's what I was kind of saying earlier about taking risks. You know, so many times, and and I was never a big risk taker. I mean. I have changed, I have grown a lot since I became an author. I'm taking chances that I've never taken before. Honestly, I was never comfortable in front of the camera. So to even be sitting here doing this interview is something I wouldn't have done six years ago. Yeah. But the thing that I've learned is that there's really nothing to lose by asking. Because if you get told no... That's no different than if you never asked at all. If you don't ask for something, you know it's a no. You're not you're not getting it because you didn't ask. Yeah. If you ask, it might only happen one time out of ten or one time out of a hundred, but you might get that yes. Right. And I got yes. That's so cool. It's totally worth taking a shot. And I it think is. That- I think I was going to say, I'm sorry. I was going to say, I think that's one of the things that I've learned from doing the interviews with you and all these other authors is that no matter what happens, like at the end of the day, go for it. Like, yep. and, cont- and then and then continue to go for it. Like, be persistent. I, and I was talking to somebody else about this. Like, persistence is like a superpower. We don't think about it, but the majority of people who just give up on their dreams. Uh, before they, they even take before they even begin it's like that's that's like 99 percent of the world you know if we can be persistent right. about what we want and like what you're talking about just keep going and, and go take that risk and be persistent about taking those risks like we can do so many amazing things well and the thing is to we look at what we call one hit wonders and they mm-hmm. usually are no Sorry, I meant overnight successes, not one-hit wonders. Overnight successes usually did not find that success overnight. We right. we perceive it that way because all of a sudden, you know, here's J.K. Rowling with Harry Potter. Right. We don't look at the, what was it, 16 times that she was turned down by different publishers for that series or something right. like that. I mean, we don't see all of that buildup where all of a sudden something just burst into popularity so what if you decided to give up today but tomorrow was the day that you would become that success absolutely that's how and that's that's what it is too it's like having that faith that it's just one more i mean if you gotta you have to really believe in what you're doing and i think it makes it easier obviously when you love what you're doing um but it it can be very difficult so I, i think being able to connect with one another I think that one of the one of the coolest things is just connecting with other writers because writing is such a solitary thing it can be that being able to connect and realize that I'm not the only one who's struggling with this or with whatever it is like they are too and they're overcoming it being able to see that is such a profoundly important thing and an empowering thing. I agree. And I I hear that a lot and I find that to be true that it's very easy to sit and think that what you're going through is all yours and, and no one else understands and no one else can identify with it. And I think being able to share with other people, it, it doesn't necessarily solve whatever problem you have, but knowing that you're not alone, that it isn't just happening to you, whether it's poor sales or, you know, you, you're not having faith in what you're writing because you know i second guess myself all of the time i third and fourth and fifth guess myself all of the time yeah but knowing you know talking to somebody else and hearing them say the same thing it's just like okay it kind of eases it a little bit like 
it doesn't make me not second guess myself, but it's kind of like it, it, it kind of validates it that, OK, I, there are other people that feel this way, too. And if they can overcome it, I can overcome it. Yeah, and I, I was talking to another friend and they said that if you could go back and look at the reviews of some of the classic writers, like some of the reviews they got, you'd realize that <laughs> even they got crap reviews. Oh, yeah. Sometimes. You know, like Shakespeare got some crap reviews sometimes. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like they can send like they all had these these, you know, people. Not everyone's going to love everything that you do. Exactly. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Sometimes when I'm feeling really low, I will go on Amazon and I will look up a best selling author and just look at their latest work and just kind of scroll down in the reviews. And it oh, makes yeah. me feel a little better. I mean, I'm sorry for them that they got one stars. But the point is that yeah. here is this best selling author, this New York Times USA Today best selling author who's been around for 20, 30 years. And guess what? They get one stars too. So you're yeah. right. Not everybody is going to like everything and that was hard in the beginning and you know bad reviews still sting yeah. but i look at them in a different way now and I, I honestly don't check my reviews every day like i used to i can go months <laughs> without checking reviews yeah but it, it's like can't um, change no yeah there's nothing we can do about it it's just and i think it's just all about boiling down to what's my voice how is my voice going to resonate with other people and just right. allowing allowing it to grow into whatever um, market that you have. Like, there's a market out there for your voice if you can find your voice and stick with it. Like, it'll it'll resonate with a certain group of people. And there's seven plus billion people on the planet. There's enough other people that want to hear what you have right. to say. You know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. This has been an incredible conversation, Christine. I, I I'm in, I'm so excited also that I just found out that you're doing that you do the uh, podcast. It's so cool. Um, I'm definitely going to check it out, and I'm going to take your advice too. I've been I, I go and I harass celebrities on Twitter um, to be on my show. So I'm going to go. I guess I'll go the like good route and <laughs> I'll email. Them. <laughs> hey, you know, I I probably sent out a dozen emails and again i only got that one reply but it was you know it was one reply it was a yes yeah. so i'm Heck good yeah. with that they're not yeah. all gonna be they're not all gonna be no's so and you won't know unless you ask but yeah man it's been a lot of fun i'll have to have you on my show yeah you, you need to come on board play yes i'd love to um and let's let's tell everybody too um, so they can find you at www.christineraymond.com. Uh, all of your books are uh, available there. To They link to Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Uh, where, you can buy it at any retailer, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and you're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Are you on any of those? I know you're on Twitter. Yeah. Face, Facebook. Yeah. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, those are the main three. I'm on Book in Maine, uh, which is a really <laughs> cool platform where you what? Facebook. I don't know why that means. <laughs> I know. Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> um, I'm sounds on like Book in Maine, which is from, it sounds like a bad movie from the early two thousands. <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> um Book in Maine is this really cool platform where you post little bites of your books and kind of like little excerpts and people can read them and, and follow the, you know, the purchase link. So you, you can share more than a blurb kind of thing. So that's a really cool platform. And uh, Eden Books is a new online platform. So my books are available for sale on Eden Books now too. So yeah, you know, I try to be everywhere. And uh, if you're looking for my website, it's Christine with a K. Christine Raymond. I like to tell people. Christine Raymond. Yep. Find me. I'm out there. And I'll, I'll uh, provide links to all your stuff in the, in the this description below in the video. Oh. So Christine, cool. Cool. thank you so much again. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, man. Best, thanks for having me on. My pleasure. Best of luck in the future writing of your books. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, looking forward to see what comes next. Bye. Bye.